Welcome to ABC 7 Extra. Good evening. I'm your host, Dylan McKim. For the next half hour, we are talking about the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest. The project is a way to celebrate the rich history of the Paso del Norte. To do this, there are plans to create 12 sculptures of historical figures that had an impact in shaping this region. They will be placed throughout the area. Three sculptures have been created so far, and the fourth one will be installed next Sunday. That is the Benito Juarez sculpture. He is the namesake of Ciudad Juarez and considered by some to be one of the best presidents in Mexico's history. And joining me now to speak about the memorial and the newest sculpture to be unveiled are two members of the 12 Travelers Committee, Jody Schwartz and Adele Adair Margo, and the sculptor of the newest piece, Ethan Hauser. And Ethan, you're joining us from Zoom. I'm seeing your video right now. Where exactly are you? Yeah, I'm in Lander, Wyoming at the Eagle Bronze Foundry. This is, this is the uh, same foundry that helped us uh, put together the equestrian monument. Okay, the equestrian monument, which we see at the El Paso airport. What are we looking at right now? Okay, this is the, uh, this is the adult Benito Juarez as he was uh, as president. And this uh, sculpture has uh, three parts. It's, it's Benito Juarez as a, as a man, Benito Juarez as a child, which I can, which is in the sandblast area. I'll go over here. And so this guy's just getting ready to be sandblasted right now. Oh, that looks great. Wow. That's fabulous. So and how much uh, more work needs to be done right now, Ethan? And, for and then there's a, there's a there's a third part which is a, is is a lamb and that is in uh, another area of uh of the foundry, uh, and it is having the patina made uh, applied to it right oh. now. Well, this is a great, so. great behind the scenes look at your foundry. We'll talk more about this newest piece later in our show, but I just want to first provide some background for our viewers on the 12 Travelers Memorial. Jody and Adair, how did 12 Travelers start? Um, it started by, it was a dream of John Hauser's, Ethan's father, 1992. He, he, went to the city council and asked if it could be part of a downtown, downtown revitalization project. And that's how it started. It was, it was supposed to be a tour of downtown with these 12, tra these 12 monuments. But now they're, all over, they're going all over the city, which actually I think is a much better way to tell about the history of our city. Our 500 year old history, this is our, is our greatest asset. Well, let's go through. I mean, there's already been three statues uh, assembled and installed throughout El Paso. Let's go through uh, the, those three that have already been installed. And let's get just a little background on the first one that was installed was uh, the, the Fry Garcia de San Francisco, which was installed downtown. Give us some background, Adair. Who was he and why was he selected? Well, Fry Garcia de San Francisco was the first builder at the Pass of the North. Uh, Tom Lee had done a book on the 12 travelers and he called him the builder. And he, he constructed with Manso Indian labor the mission of Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, which is just a beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, Mudejar, they call it Mudejar, Moorish influence in that uh, little mission that's built of adobe and wood. And so Fry Garcia, uh, was the one who came down from New Mexico to work with the Monsos in constructing that mission. And where it's located downtown in yep. Pioneer Plaza, um, you know, you go right down uh, uh, El Paso Street uh, to pass. It was called El Paso Street because it was a street to Paso del Norte, to El Paso, and what, which was in Juarez, which is where the mission is. And a maquette, which is great about the 12 travelers, is it connects both sides of our border. A maquette of that little, a model of that Fry Garcia stands in front of the actual mission. Is that mission still used today in Ciudad Juarez? It is. It has never ceased ser serving the pu public. It wow. was founded in 1659 wow. and completed, the construction was completed in 1668. Has anything been renovated? Is it the same structure that was there all those years ago, all those centuries ago? They, they did a restoration of the, of the uh, mission in the 60s, uh, where they, many of those mission churches, since they were built with vigas or beams, 
uh, across the top and then they were when there was rain they would patch it if there was a leak they would patch it with mud so many of those ceilings over hundreds of years uh, became so heavy they collapsed that's how many of those churches have been destroyed but in Wattis they constructed a an I-beam system above it so it doesn't bear any weight and it was completely restored uh, then by a, a Frenchman named uh, Felipe Lacouture who came and worked on that mission. Very interesting. Let's, let's talk about the biggest statue that's in El Paso. The one everyone can see at the airport is a statue of Juan de Oñate riding on a horse. Why was he selected for this project? Well, the city council selected him as one of the two monuments that were supposed to be downtown. So, and it was to celebrate the colonization of New Mexico with this, and, and he was the leader of the colony and there were like 500 men, women, children, soldiers. It was just a great, a great story that went right through our Pass of the North. That's another great story that not many people know about. So that's why he was chosen. There was some controversy with, uh, with this statue. Of course, it is Juan de Oñate. He has been found to uh, have committed crimes against indigenous people in the area. The name, actually, of this sculpture changed to the equestrian. I believe it was back in 2003. Can you kind of talk about the history of, of what happened as this, this structure or this sculpture was being built and uh, being planned? Well, um, 1990, no, 2003, that's, I think that's when it was changed to the equestrian because of the controversy. There were people that, you know, took issue with with what he did to some of the Native Americans that actually wasn't even proven. But, um, you know, those were rough times back then. And I just, I think, you know, we, how are we, how, why are we judge of what happened 400 plus years ago? Well, anyway, it was changed. And I think that's a very good idea. And we just call it the equestrian. It's the largest equestrian bronze in the world and it's magnificent. Wow. So that was a good thing to do, to change the name because we didn't want it to be controversial at all. So. And no, there's no controversy about the coming of the horse, which he, which he brought. When you're dealing with human beings, you know, sinful human right. beings, you can always pick on something. But he was also married to Montezuma's granddaughter. And mestizaje, the mixture of the races, had already begun in Mexico. We all love, we have no Mexico. Right. Uh, so we're, we're uh, and it's so interesting the way the 12th Travelers has unfolded because our next monument's going to be the Tigua Indians. And it was because of the Pueblo Revolt up in New Mexico after the colonization that the Tiguas ended up coming south to where we are. So that's what I love about the series of monuments is that you learn when you start trying to knock someone off, you might end up not being present yourself. So it's you see how uh, events in history and these giant yeah, figures yeah. represent eras, mm -hmm. uh, how, how it all works together. Yeah, very unique statues here. The third statue that was installed was the first woman in this memorial, Susan Shelby McGoffin. It is placed at Keystone Heritage Park. Uh, what is her story? What's her contribution to the Paso del Norte? Well, she represents the McGoffin family, which was a pioneer family in our, in our region. And, um, and she was this brave little 19-year-old bride who was really the only woman on this expedition going south um, in, when was it? Uh, like, oh gosh, it was like, oh gosh. I, well, it was like. Some time ago. <laughs> it was some time ago. <laughs> I'm gonna remember in a second, I, I will. But anyway, she's just a beautiful, lovely monument that people love to just go in the park and find her and just contemplate because she's, she's got her dog with her. And she was this brave little woman that actually it broke her health coming down through this from Missouri down into Mexico. And she loved our area. She had wrote a diary that's, that's read in a lot of colleges about, and she just loved our city and she, or our, it was a Pueblo then. She loved the culture. She loved the Mexican, um, the Mexican dresses. She just, she was just a good choice for a, a woman. You embrace the culture there. Mm hmm Okay, let's take a quick break right now. You're watching ABC 7 Extra. Still ahead, we will talk about the newest statue, Benito Juarez, the history of an iconic Mexican president, and how this statue relates to the Abraham Lincoln statue in Ciudad Juarez. Stay with us.
At the Hospitals of Providence East Campus, we are answering the call to care for our rapidly growing community with the completion of a $20 million expansion plan, investing in East El Paso for generations to come. Learn more at thehospitalsofprovidence.com slash East Campus. Do you want some more? Want some more? Until you see me on the downhill. <laughs> <laughs> see you at home. Real luxury, real confidence. Enjoy with the advanced safety features of a Lexus ES. Get 2.99% APR financing on the 2022 ES350. This is Andrew Meyer from UTEP Football. Be there on Friday, September 23rd when the Miners battle Mountain West Power, Boise State, at 7 p.m. in the Sun Bowl. Went up to $1,000 every time the Miners score with a Speaking Rock cash giveaway. The game is sponsored by GECU, and don't forget to visit the free Speaking Rock pregame party zone, featuring a live performance by Lit and fun for the whole family. We'll see you on September 23rd. Go Miners! New Mexico deserves better than extremist politicians who take orders from party leaders instead of us. So I'm running for Congress to fix it. I was raised by a single mother, built a small business, and served on the Las Cruces City Council. My name is Gabe Vasquez, and to protect a woman's right to choose, lower costs for families, and give New Mexico what it deserves, I'll stand up to any party leader. That's why I approve this message. At the Hospitals of Providence East Campus, we are answering the call to care for our rapidly growing community with the completion of a $20 million expansion plan, investing in East El Paso for generations to come. Learn more at thehospitalsofprovidence.com slash East Campus. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra. We are discussing the newest installment of the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest. It is the fourth statue, and it is Benito Juarez. And Adair Jody, Benito Juarez really was an iconic president in Mexico. He was, and I, I, I love the choice of Benito uh, Juarez, a Zapotec Indian, a full-bred Zapotec Indian, a great president, a great constitutional president of Mexico, uh, who was a contemporary of Abraham Lincoln's. They were presidents at the same time. Their countries were beset by civil war. Mexico was the... Uh, the French had put Maximilian on the throne. There was an intervention, and he came up to Paso del Norte uh, fleeing and lived. I, this is actually history I learned by being associated with this project. He lived in Paso del Norte, the south side of the Rio Grande, the dividing line, and at the, at the border. And at that time, he was dealing with issues of a flooding river. Mm. And um, that ended up being the Chami, I mean, it was the Chamizal, and w which was settled uh, finally in uh, 1964. So his history and his relationship to, to Abraham Lincoln are extraordinarily important. And there is a uh, relief that will be installed with the monument that has both great presidents, both who rose from poverty, both who ro rose to greatness, uh, through the study of law and education, and uh, both who respected one another. And Ciudad Juarez, I mean, takes its name from the former president. I believe, I'm, you can correct me if I'm wrong, though, Adair, and, and add some context here, but in my research, it looks like uh, during a French occupation, he was moving his cabinet around to different cities from Mexico City, took it out, and he did come up to Paso del Norte, and, and that's when, uh, I guess he spent some time here and was became beloved in that area. They decided to name their city after him. Right. In 1888, uh, they renamed Paso del Norte uh, Ciudad Juarez. And that's when El Paso had been Franklin at that time. Wow, and okay. then El Paso uh, took the name uh, El Paso. But you're right. He, Fort Bliss, uh, and, uh, they asked him to come cross. Nick, Nick Hauser, who's an extraordinary historian, has done a lot of this history. I've learned it through him but how they offered him asylum to cross uh, and come to the other side, but he refused politely, saying that he'd never leave his country while it, why, while it was occupied by a foreign power. Wow. Well, I want to confirm something, because in my research, I want to see if this is true, if this is what you've had uh, learned in your research, but I read President Waters, he was four foot six, not a very tall man, uh, and not a very tall stature there. He was four foot six and Abraham Lincoln was six foot four. <laughs> <laughs> and they were friends. 
They do. They never met, but they respected one another. Abraham Lincoln has always been respected in Mexico. He was non-punitive against Mexico and really was against mm -hmm. the Mexican-American War. So he had friends there, but he, he, uh, he and Benito Juarez had great respect for one another, and I think there was some correspondence. Wasn't there, Jody, or a letter? Yes. The, from uh, one to the other. No, right. Benito Juarez lowered all the flags in Mexico when, when Abraham died, Lincoln was yeah. assassinated. It, true, they just uh, admired each other tremendously. There's a lot Never of respect met. right there. But um, Abraham Lincoln did um, host Abraham Juarez's wife, Margarita, at, at the White House several times. Um, as First Lady of Mexico, so that was nice. She had 12 children with him, and um, half of them died in early childhood, so th those were hard times. Yeah. Tell me about the book. Oh yeah, Benito Juarez, the, the older, mo the figure of him as an adult, he's holding this book called Letters to My Children, or Notes to My Children, and it was when he was writing to his children, he was in exile in Mexico for almost two years at some point and so he was missing his children and writing to them and so that's the book that he's holding in his hand and then the young Benito Juarez the the little Zapotec uh, sheep herder is looking at a book wishing he, he could read yeah. he was illiterate he didn't know anything but he learned he had he ran away from his well he was orphaned as a child and his uncle raised him, and his uncle was a sheep herder. And so, so little Benito was helping his uncle. And one day, somebody stole one of the sheep, and he was so horrified that his, he'd get in so much trouble that he went all the way to um, Oaxaca, like 38 wow. miles on barefoot. And then somebody took him in that was a lay, a lay Franciscan who realized how intelligent he was and started teaching him Latin and Spanish. And he went from there to one of the greatest presidents, yeah. if not the greatest of Mexico. A real rags to riches story there, right mm -hmm. there for Benito Juarez. Well, I want to invite in Ethan again. And Ethan, if you can hear us, we want to talk about that, uh, the sculpture. You're at the foundry right now in Wyoming. We can see your team there is still uh, actively working on the adult Benito, as I can see right there. Uh, kind of ex explain, <laughs> describe the statue. Uh, it's, it's titled Child to Man. Okay. Um, let, let me just... Uh, Tell you right here, what I, this thing right here is called the, uh, the maquette, and uh, each one of these lines here uh, is the separation of where one of the uh, mold section was. So you see, this is one mold section. This is another mold mm -hmm. mold section here. So each each one of those, but it's a mold section, and each one of those mold sections was cast individually, and then it had to be put together and uh, weld, welded together. So you could see that one mold section went through here, up here, and what what the foundry does is they will, sorry, it's a little noisy here. The foundry will cut, will weld these things together and then use a grinding tool to Smooth out the edges, so there's a, there's a lot to do. I don't know if you can hear me well. And we can hear, I can hear the grind happening right now, Ethan. We're going to take a quick break, but what you're telling me right now and what the visual we're getting, it's very interesting. We're going to come back, we're going to still ahead. We'll talk more with Ethan, the sculptor, about what it takes to make this newest statue that will be unveiled next week. Stay with us. This is the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder and Rogue. With a range of drive modes and intelligent off-road technology, you can take a Sunday stroll in the least basic of places. The 2022 Nissan family of SUVs. Anything but basic. Get low financing plus no payments for 90 days on Rogue with best-in-class fuel economy. A brain experiencing a stroke ages 3.6 years each hour it goes without treatment, erasing memories. University Medical Center's Mobile Stroke Unit is the most advanced system of its kind in the world, ready with state-of-the-art technology, giving El Pasoans advanced treatment capabilities by bringing a specialized team and the hospital to you, cutting your treatment time and helping to save lives and memories, because every second counts. UMC, we care for El Paso. 
Behind Mark Ronchetti's smooth smile and slick PR campaign, his plan will take away abortion rights in New Mexico. Ronchetti said he opposes abortion at all stages and was endorsed by extremists who want to criminalize abortion, even in cases of rape and incest. The real Ronchetti would take away a woman's right to control her own body. We can't trust Ronchetti as governor. Paid for by a stronger New Mexico. Great news! Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso is expanding! That's right, construction's a must, so please pardon our dust while we prepare a bigger, better, state-of-the-art showroom and service experience for you! We're open during construction and fully stocked with the vehicles you love and prices you'll love even more! Like Elantris, Tucson, Santa Fe, Santa Cruz's, and even Palisades! All available with zero down! That's zero cash out of pocket! And interest rates as low as 2.79% APR for 60 months! Only at Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso! Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra. I want to send things back out to Wyoming at the foundry where we find Ethan Hauser. He's the sculptor of the uh, sculptor of previous 12 traveler statues and now of the newest Benito Juarez statue. Ethan, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, let's pick up where we left off. I mean, everyone's going to be interested. Now a lot of people get to see inside of a foundry. What goes into the process of making this most recent project? And we discussed it a little bit last uh, segment. Give me a little understanding of what it, what's the process. How long have you been working on this? Well, they've, they've been working on this for a few months now. Um, they, so like I said, they have to start with the mold. And, um, sorry, let me put a noise in here. So they will, they will take those molds and the, then they will, uh, each mold will be, will be cast. And uh, each cast will be welded together, and that's what they're doing right now. Now, after after the piece is uh, completely welded together, then it then it will be uh, sandblasted, and uh, patina will be applied. Um, Jody was talking about the uh, the sheep a little earlier. This is also part of the part of the monument um, here, and here is the sheep right there, and. You can see that he's had a little bit of a patina drawn right now, but th this is just a preliminary patina where we're just looking at little little spots here and there to see where where the uh, the finished texture can improve. Yes, yeah, so did you ever have to start over on these kind of projects? Have you ever run into any problems? What kind of problems can come out of uh, projects like this? I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Yeah, I was asking, you know, what, what kind of problems do you ever run into? Have you ever had to start over on a project? Uh, I mean, what kind of things can come out? What kind of problems can happen during one of these projects? Well, anytime you have lots of different pieces uh, that, that need to be welded together, there's invariably going to be some little little problems uh, with it not looking quite quite the way it, it was when I when I modeled it in the first place. So... That's uh, why I'm here right now, so I can I can just check it over, and because since I, since I was the one who modeled it, then it'll be more apparent to someone like me to be able to find little little spots here and there, or or, or areas of the form that uh, might need to be adjusted or or bent a little bit, you know, in the in, in the bronze. So that I'm just sort of here for quality control. Jody and Adair were telling me about a death mask, the death mask of Benito Juarez. What is a death mask, and how are you using it in this project? Yeah, okay. So it was uh, it was our friend Julian Martinez, who was a, a sculptor in Mexico City. That that we. I think we just lost. I think we just lost Ethan right there. Uh, but Jody and Adair, I know we've been seeing that live picture of Ethan. Uh, very exciting. Have you ever seen? Have you ever been to that foundry up there in Wyoming to actually see them do their work? I actually have, yes. When the monument, when the equestrian was being put together, well, we went out with, I went up with my family and Ethan and John and saw it pulled out from that big studio warehouse with these huge cranes and it was actually very thrilling. They're a very fine foundry. It's a, it was a thrill to see that. I can only imagine how, how giant that equestrian Sculpture must have been, what is it, 30 to 40 feet in the air? 36 feet. It's the, t it's the largest in the world. And also it represents the horse, which o Oñate brought, the, introduced the horse to the American Southwest. 
He actually was the one because mayors came along, and so that's really an important thing about this beautiful equestrian. Well, I and think, it, oh, go ahead. I wanted to say one thing about that because John Hauser was a classicist, an yes. extraordinary treasure. He was moved by the story of Leonardo da Vinci, who did a, the largest horse in the world in Milano, and uh, he never got to realize it. Uh, it ended up being used for cannonballs. Right, right? cannonballs. But uh, so it, John's idea, of course, Jody was involved with the project, trying to raise money and keep it on schedule. And all of a sudden, John, John wants to make it the largest in the world. But it was to it was to respond. He is in that class of artists that is so extraordinary in wanting to make it the largest in the world in uh, uh, to kind of fulfill Leonardo's dream. And that's kind of what's special about this project. John Hauser, that is the father of Ethan Hauser. John actually, uh, he started this project, I believe it was 1988, was when he, st he kind of visioned the 12 travelers and wanted to get that off the ground. Right. Uh, he unexpectedly passed away uh, four years ago in 2018. His son, uh, Ethan, he had helped him out. He'd been an associate sculptor on, I believe it was all three of those yes, uh, the sculptures we have, have uh, yeah, installed here. And now he's taken reins. He's uh, now leading the sculpture for the Benito Juarez. I mean, uh, and what's Ethan's that mean? And Ethan's grandfather worked on yeah. Mount Rush, Rush Mount Rushmore. Yeah. I, saw, I saw a film of him rappelling down Lincoln's nose. I mean, right. I mean, it's an extraordinary family story and very. It is, yeah, John Hauser. Many his youth, or when he was a young boy, just grew up looking up at Mount Rushmore. So he thought big. He's just he thinks big, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a great family tradition that that third generation. It's just beautiful story, I think. Well, we see Ethan and his team. They're working very hard. They're uh, they're grinding away out there in Wyoming in the foundry, getting the Benito Juarez man to child uh, sculpture finished. It will be on its way to El Paso and. And fill us in, uh, Adair and Jody. When will this be unveiled? Next week, right next Sunday? Uh, the 25th, Sunday the 25th at 1 o'clock. All the public is invited. Maybe bring an umbrella if it's a hot day. <laughs> That's what I would suggest. Um, at the Chamazal Memorial, correct? Yes, uh huh. The Chamazal. And it will be facing Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Right? Lincoln on the other side. So it'll be facing Soar. Yeah, 58, the the, 58 years later, we're finally fulfilling, we're finally fulfilling what we should have done many years ago, and that's have our monument facing Lincoln. You yeah. know, the two facing each other in friendship across the Rio Grande. It's a great story. Two great presidents that respected each other in the times of their in their time. Now facing each other, Margo, or excuse me, Adair. <laughs> Adair, buddy, thank you so much for coming on. It's exciting. Next week, of course, you heard them. Everyone's invited. One o'clock next Sunday, the unveiling of the uh, Benito Juarez statue at the Chamizal Memorial. Thank you so much for joining us for ABC 7 Extra. I'm Dylan McKenna.